Do I want people to actually see this? He's not really moving. The green bottle blue definitely did not make it. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. It is just mid-November, right? I mean, we don't normally have winter starting like this. There is no way that this winter is ever going to end. But regardless, I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing. What do you say we head over to the shop? Guys, take a look. I absolutely love the way Lucy looks right now. She was up in the tree the last couple days, and now she's coming down. She's right underneath the basking light. She's just kind of hanging out there. Oh my God, that is so epic. This is the first time I've ever seen her do this in this cage. I love it. And actually, I kind of envisioned this. When we built that rock structure in there, I actually thought, oh, she's going to come up and lay on it just like this. So it's pretty cool to finally see it happen. So later on today, we're supposed to be getting a shipment of tarantulas because I'm really working on this arachnid wall, but Noah has the bright idea to film yeah. feeding the Goliath bird eater. Yeah. And of course, we've got the Goliath bird eater just in what it came in. Look at the size of that tarantula yeah, too big. there. Can I say something with it? Where did you get the idea for the arachnid wall? I think it's great. I'm actually excited. I'm super. I know Bruce is excited about it. Eric is so excited. He's Pretty not even excited. coming to the restroom not, anymore. No, I'm not. He's I listen. done. I was scared when these when these were in the building. I almost was like, you know what? Can I be in the North Branch Division, <laughs> work from home? I'm scared. These, it, oh my! God, just look at them. It's terrifying. That, that one. You can't. You don't understand the size on camera. It's huge. It is huge. So uh, on Noah's vlog, he's actually going to transfer this spider over to this cage with the help of Bruce, of course, and then you're gonna feed it, right? Oh, yeah, we're gonna feed it. Honestly, guys, I'm a little bit stressed out because we actually had a couple spiders that were coming in. They were supposed to be here yesterday, got delayed because of a storm. They aren't here yet, so hopefully these things make it. I understand now when we ship to people and their shipment gets delayed, I'm always like, it'll be fine, and they're all stressed. Now I'm stressed, so fingers crossed these tarantulas come in because they're really beautiful. I'm so excited about them. But in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and do this, and I'll put a link in the description to Noah's channel. Who knows what's gonna happen? Good chances Eric is gonna get bit or something worse. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description. It's gonna be mayhem. And while I'm anxiously awaiting the tarantulas to come in and hopefully they will be okay, I did want to show you this dude here. Oh my gosh, is that incredible. Oh my God. Of course, that's a bird-eating spider. And there's actually two species. I guess there's the blondeye and the sturmi or whatever. This happens to be the more common one, which is the sturmi, but still they get absolutely huge. And I think it's weird. I, I think it's kind of bizarre that I find this animal fascinating. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You're talking to a guy that two years ago couldn't even look at a spider without breaking into chills. And now I'm looking at these things singing, oh my God, they're incredible. So fingers crossed this shipment comes in okay and these transfers are all right. While we're waiting on the shipment, I give you guys a little update about what's happening here over at BHB. After all, that's a big part of our life as well. I mean, it seems like I spend a lot of time at the Reptarium because I absolutely love it. But the truth is, BHB is awesome too. I mean, such incredible animals. This Mexican black king snake and all of the colubrids are actually about to go into hibernation. So basically, where we're at right now is we stopped feeding about three weeks ago because you want to keep them at warmer temperatures, stop feeding them, get all of that kind of material out of their body, all that waste. And of course, checkered garter snakes are a clue as well and they hibernate too and so basically after a few weeks we go through and we do a complete revamp of every single cage so basically we break it down bleach it put new bedding in all that stuff because again their immune system is going to drop in hibernation so if you take an animal like an albino nelson's milk snake and you have it in either a dirty cage or there's material in its stomach that it's still digesting and then you cool it down to 55 degrees or so you're going to probably kill the animal so we don't want that to happen for sure so basically where we're at now is we're just starting to revamp these animals and get them all cleaned up and ready for hibernation. That'll probably happen in about a week. Take a look at this leucistic scaleless Texas rat snake. I always love that little animal and it's going to be a bummer because all these snakes again go into a dark cool room for three months. You check on them every day just to make sure everything's okay but they'll hibernate for about three months. And of course there's the leopard geckos you know and they are exactly the same thing as colubrids. They just don't cool off quite as much. We're at the same spot with them. Now some people actually breed colubrids and leopard geckos and 
multiple cycles, which means basically, you know, you have maybe four or five different cycles. Some are breeding in June, some are in August, some are in December. With us, we just breed once a year, both with our leopard geckos and our colubrids. So these guys are cleaning out the exact same way. We take them off of food for two or three weeks. Their metabolism is a little bit quicker than a colubrid, so you don't have to take them off quite as long. But you can see these guys are chunky little monkeys. Oh my God, I absolutely love them. And we have a whole bunch of new ones coming up this next year that are gonna be ridiculous. Jessica keeps holding back some amazing, amazing animals. But nevertheless, these guys will cool down, but not down into the mid 50s or even low 50s. Typically what we'll do with these guys is drop them down to about 65 degrees or so. But again, you don't have to do that. If you have a pet colubrid or you have a pet leopard gecko, you don't have to cool them off at all. As a matter of fact, a lot of people even breed them without cooling them off. So you don't have to do what we're doing, but for us, it's always worked out well. And just take a look at these little monkeys right here. Oh my gosh, they are so absolutely adorable. So hibernation season is upon us. We are about to put colubrids down. We're going to put leopard geckos down. And then things get a lot easier here because all these animals we've been caring for are in hibernation and they just need fresh water and to be checked on. And that's basically it. And that gives everyone here at the crew to kind of catch up after a completely insane summer. And then we have the python season, which is basically, you know, our ball pythons, children, and spots, and all of that type of stuff. These guys are actually in the part where they start to cool down as well, but they don't go into hibernation. This super lorry ball is ready to go. Unfortunately, she's laid a bad clutch of eggs last year, so fingers crossed she does a lot better for us too. And we actually have another super lorry pinstripe that should go this year too. So hopefully we can do some more with that lorry project. But regardless, what happens with these guys is you take them from say 82, 84 degrees with a hot spot of 92 or so, something like that. And you just drop them down just a little bit, down to maybe 78 degrees at night. The hot spot drops about five degrees or so. And that's basically it. But unlike the colubrids, you don't clean them out and let them cool off. You actually increase the food. So there's a bunch of different ways to cycle or trigger animals to breed. When it comes to colubrids and leopard geckos, that trigger is typically a cool down. When it comes to pythons, it's a cool down. But what we do as well, a little secret that seems to work for us at least, is we actually cycle their food. So we maintain feed them through the summer. And then this time of the year, we start really hammering with food. We literally will like double the food, really put calories into those females. And as those females get plump and really beefy, they start to grow follicles. And then you actually breed them. And again, with colubrids and leopard geckos, you're actually breeding when they warm up. With pythons, you're actually breeding them when they're cooled down or when they're cycling. And we actually will ultrasound for anyone that's been watching the vlog for any length of time. You guys know that we're always ultrasounding and checking for follicular growth. I would guess this girl probably has about five to seven millimeter follicles, which means she's not even quite ready to breed yet. But pretty soon, she'll get to 10 millimeters. That's kind of that trigger point where you put males in and then you're breeding them over the next three to five months. And it's basically a really similar thing for things like these Sabu pythons and children's and spotted pythons and stuff like that. We cool them just a little bit and we just start really beefing up the females as much as we can. Now the males, ironically enough, you want to feed pretty good, but you don't want to feed too much because if you overfeed them, they might get lazy and not breed. So we just give them a nice maintenance diet during the breeding season. And a lot of males go off of food after a first month or so of breeding. They're just like, I just want to breed. I don't want to eat anymore. So we don't really worry about that. So don't overfeed your males, but feed your females really well. And one of the things I just find fascinating about working with animals and in particular breeding animals is kind of finding all of those triggers, right? Then you have the blue tongue skinks that are a little bit different than both the leopard geckos and colubrids as well as the pythons because these guys do cool down, but they don't cool down a whole lot. So we do the exact same thing where we take them off of food and we just drop the temperature a little bit for the northerns. We'll go from 84, 85 degrees. We'll drop them into like the mid 70s, no hot spot whatsoever. And we just do that for like maybe six to eight weeks to try to simulate what they're going to get in the wild. But when it comes to the eastern, like this eastern eye banded here, they actually are from the New South Wales area that get much, much cooler. So we're going to try this year to drop them down to about the leopard gecko range, maybe in that like 62 to 65 degree range. Do that for six to eight weeks as well and then bring them up. And these guys, again, breed when they come up, but they breed much earlier than the leopard geckos and the colubrids. Those guys actually breed in say March and April. These guys will literally breed like the end of December, early January. So everything's a little bit different. And that's what I love about this. So I'm curious, I used to do a lot of vlogs that talked all about like breeding, the way you do it, the success level, all kinds of different things. I don't know if you guys want me to do some of that stuff. I'll be happy to get in depth on some of that stuff if you'd like. But if you guys would get bored with it, I won't do it. But regardless, just let me know what you guys think. Well, I'm excited and nervous that the package showed up. Uh, let's hope these guys are alive. Of course, I've got Jessica and Bruce here. Uh, they're the tarantula people. So I, I don't even know how to tell if a tarantula is alive or not yeah. after shipping. So let's, let's hope and pray this thing works out. And fingers crossed that they're okay. But one of these tarantulas is going to be a great display animal. A beautiful tarantula, but definitely not one to be held. The other one is actually an animal 
animal that you can take out and hold, known for being pretty cool handling. So, oh my gosh, the fact that they were delayed an extra day stresses me out beyond belief, but let's hope and pray that they're okay. Oh yeah, that one's okay. This one's alive? That one looks like he's all right. I can take, give him a minute though, let him cool down. Honestly, I think that might be just chill though. And this one here is actually a green bottle blue, but it's really lethargic. I mean, these guys got really chill, but you don't think that they normally go into like what you said, a death curl, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna let this warm up for a little bit. I hope that it's gonna be okay. I mean, I think it's gonna be all right. I'm not sure, but it definitely is really cold. You know, these guys can kind of go into almost a hibernative state, much like a lot of the snakes do when they get really cold. So. Fingers crossed this one's gonna be okay. I'll keep you guys posted. We're gonna warm them up for the next half hour or so, and then we'll check on them. Quick update, it's been about 10 minutes or so. A little bit of response here on the OBT. Uh, the green bottle blue doesn't seem to be moving. Um, just don't know. I mean, we're gonna need more time. Definitely bummed out. And again, I just, I hope this works out. I thought these would be so cool. I mean, I hate this. I mean, shipping is typically so safe. It hardly ever is a problem. Um, in this case, it just was kind of like the perfect storm. There was a winter storm, it got delayed. Uh, just, I don't know, we're, we're just hopeful. Hopefully they still go, so uh, I'm gonna keep on working on it. Good news, the OBT here seems to be starting to move a bunch. Every time I open the lid, it kind of moves around, so I think the OBT is gonna be completely fine. Unfortunately, the green bottle blue is not moving still. We're gonna continue to try to be as hopeful as we can, and you know, I really struggled with whether or not I was even gonna share this. I mean, once this whole thing went down, I was like, do I want people to actually see this. I've mentioned this before. I want you guys to see what it's like, everything that we go through here. I don't want you to be afraid to ship animals. I mean, we ship literally hundreds and hundreds of packages every single month and literally have no issues. This was like a perfect situation where number one, there was a storm, there was a delay, and even after the delay, it should have been here at 10 in the morning, didn't get here till two o'clock. I mean, all kinds of things had to go wrong for this to happen. And then unfortunately, the heat packs that were used were just not really the kind that lasts a long time. We use 40 hour heat packs and I realize most people can't get 40 hour heat packs So these smaller heat packs will literally only last maybe eight or ten hours So all those things stacked up really cause this and and again I feel sick to my stomach and the guy that sent them he feels terrible about it. He's an animal lover and he never wanted something like this to happen We both feel terrible because if we wouldn't have shipped them, they would still be doing fine I still have hope for the green bottle blue, but it's not looking good The OBT at least does look like it's pulling through so I don't know guys like I said I was really stressed out out even thinking about sharing this. I don't want you guys to think bad about anyone, the guy that shipped it, myself, anyone, but this is kind of what happens. It's part of it. It sucks. It's terrible. I'm just grateful that at least the OBT seems to be coming back. I'm still going to hold on hope for as long as possible on the other one. So the update is, is the green bottle blue definitely did not make it. Unfortunately, I'm very, very sad about it. I mean, what a bummer. I mean, that was a beautiful animal. And again, it wasn't really anyone's fault. I mean, it just kind of stinks that that happened. One of those things where like one in a thousand times this is gonna happen where the perfect thing works, where everything is slowed down. And I just feel devastated about it. With that said, the OBT came back. It looks completely fine. And I couldn't be happier with the fact that that one at least made it. I would have been devastated if both of them were. But again, Again, I, I hope that you guys don't mind that I shared that experience with you. It definitely stinks. But I certainly know that the OBT is going to make people really think, oh my God, it's such a beautiful animal. So as it settles in a little bit, we're going to give it some time. We'll get it set up. I'll kind of do a little feature of it, let you guys see how amazing that is. As for now, we're actually going to open up at the Reptarium tonight. So I've got to get over there, get my last things done, and then go ahead and hopefully have the best night as I can. Do my best to kind of put this behind me and just try to enjoy everyone that shows up tonight. Thanks to that little guy for this. The kids, I think, like this stuffed animal snake better than even the real snakes. Go on, don't be afraid. Just wrapping up at the Reptarium, had some people come in from Massachusetts a little late, so we spent a little time at the Reptarium after it was closed. After all, I can't have them dry 15 hours, 18 hours, whatever it happens to be, and not get a chance to see the place. We had an absolutely amazing night. Really what I needed after kind of a bummer what happened with the shipment. A little update, the OBT looks absolutely incredible. I cannot wait till you guys that come to the Reptarium actually see it. What a beautiful little tarantula. Unfortunately, the green bottle blue did not make it, which is totally a bummer. So again, I'm sorry I had to 
take you guys on that journey. Let me know if you're all right with it. Again, I really struggled with this. Should I show it? Shouldn't I show it? So let me know what you guys think because in the future, maybe I won't show it. I'm not even really sure if I made the right decision. Let me know what you guys think. But as for now, I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog and wish you guys an absolutely amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching. As always, your support means the absolute world to me, and I truly, truly love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video. Make a comment down below because I love reading about your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone today, and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>